Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. It's been a while, I've been pretty sparse lately. I have not been ultra busy, but I've just been doing enough stuff and not felt good enough about making a YouTube video that I haven't made one. So, here we go. I've got some equipment stuff that has changed, and uh, it's actually kind of interesting, at least to me. I just played a trombone that looks kind of weird and also kind of familiar. Let's take another look at it. Just uh, take a gander. Maybe you recognize some of these parts. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's kind of confusing. What are these things? Um, and let's see, why, why does it look familiar? Well, because it looks a lot like this, doesn't it? Huh, that's strange. <laughs> what could this horn be? Well, uh, there's a guy on Trombone Chat who I know, I've, I've talked to him a couple times in the past, who has sold two valve sections recently, and I bought both of them because I just cannot help myself from buying cool bass valve sections um, for not at super expensive prices. There are a lot of cool valve sections out there that are really expensive. I don't buy those. I buy the cheap ones. One was an axial valve section that I ended up just um, selling to my tech because it needed too much work. It was not worth the effort. This one, however, did not really need any work. This is a Yamaha 613H valve section <clears throat> that has been modded, shall we say. It now has a Bach slide receiver and has a Bach tuning slide receiver. It has um, standoff so it can mount a bell, probably a Bach bell, and a Bach 50 tuning slide, as well as a Shires um, grip thing that's on all modern Shires. Got one of those on here. Might take it off, put it on my Shires because I still need one. And like a couple other small changes. Um, I think like the bell brace position is different so the lever had to move a little bit um, and so the lever is bent and uh, you might notice I have a bell on here that's actually not mounted. This is my um, Bach 50 Corporation bell that is a uh, screw bell of course and it's not mounted for this yet so I've just friction fitted. Luckily this bell section came with the mounts um, for the bell so all I really have to do is take this to my tech and say solder this onto these mounts um, but I haven't done that yet and I really wanted to try this out and see how it is and so I friction fit this on here if you look I can't really do it because this is actually fit together very well but I could lift this bell off of this mount it's not soldered to it it's soldered to this mount which is upside down but not the one on the bell and of course the reason I don't have this just you know mounted with these is they're completely different spacing <clears throat> Mine are very short, and the ones on this horn are very long, so I can't put it on with my my normal setup. And I'm using my Shires uh, dual bore slide. And yes, this does stay together, even though it's just friction fit. It's only being held together right here at the tuning slide, <clears throat> because this tuning slide is fit pretty tight. And this is a Bach bell that's set up reasonably the same as what was on it before. And it just fits very well. It's not like ultra, ultra tight. It's pretty easy to get off, but it's not going to fall off either. It's not like I put this on a trombone stand, but it doesn't fall apart, which is pretty cool. Now, what do I think of this hybrid monster uh, Frankenbone thing? It's so good. I'm <laughs> a little bit blown away. I already like the 613H. I've owned one recently, and of course I own a Yamaha 630G, which has the same valve section, otherwise is not the same. And I like them a lot. There's a reason I play that horn. There's a reason I bought the 613H. But there's also a reason I sold the 613H. I thought it was pretty good, but just like not amazing. It didn't blow me away in any way. The 630G that I have right here actually is really cool in some respects. The 613H just kind of isn't. It's very competent. I think it's better than most uh, Yamaha 830s, which is the successor to this model. Um, but I don't like love playing it. And I want a horn to bring me joy. That horn didn't bring me any joy. However, with a Bach tuning slide, Bach bell, and a different slide, this valve section rules. It plays so well. It sounds great. I'm, 
I'm a little blown away. Like, I bought this and I was like, you know, I know those valves pretty well. Played them on a bunch of horns now. And they are so good. This shouldn't be a surprise. I have a friend who I've played with a lot who has a Con 72H, not a modern horn that you see a lot, with Yamaha 830 valves. So it's just a 72H slide, 72H tuning slide, 72H bell with Yamaha 830 valves. Not a combo that a lot of people have done. It's probably just one of those. And it's really, really good horn. Um, like, way better than any 830 that I've ever played. And way more useful than a stock 72H. So you end up with something that's better than the parts that went into it. This is kind of the same way. I'm uh, a little surprised. And now I have a conundrum. What do I do with it? All three of my Bach 50 bells, and yes, I have three. I have two that are not cut, and I have this uh, cut bell, are mounted for my monster valve section, which is not right here right now. We're going to talk about that when it shows up in the mail. And I kind of like that they all fit that valve section. That's fine with me. And I don't have any more 50 bells. So what do I do with this? Do I, do I take the hit and I unmount it um, for my... Uh, monster valve section and I just put like the screw bell on this and this is my travel horn. Do I use one of my uncut bells because do I need two bells that are uncut for the monster valve section and just put one of those on this? I don't know. I'm at a total loss because it plays really really well and I, I just don't know what to do with it. Something that I do have sitting around however is this. Um, long time viewers of the last couple years might recognize this. This is a Elkhart Con 62H bell. Usually would be worth a bit of money because those are really cool horns. But it has been destroyed. Um, the, the flare of this got crunched originally very badly. I'm actually going to put this down because I can't put it on a stand. The flare of this got crunched very badly at some point to the point where it ripped. and It had to be soldered back together. And then when I bought it, it showed up completely crunched again. So it had been completely destroyed twice. Does it play? Yeah, it actually does. It doesn't sound bad by any means. This horn's or this bell flare is a goner. There's no point in kind of even thinking about it. I have had my tech beat it out to like the approximate shape it should be, but it's done for. It's not really worth it. However, on a screw bell, you have a stem, which is the kind of thinner part of the bell, and you have the flare, which is, you know, the big part at the end. And you'll notice there's a seam in the bell right here. These are two-piece bells from Con, And this seam is just about where a screw ring goes. And you notice right at the seam, there's no damage. This bell is actually, apart from like a little tiny ding right here and like, you know, the lacquer's kind of coming off, this bell's in great shape upwards from the seam. So my thought is, have this bell cut, put a ring on here, and then get a carbon fiber flare from Butler that screws on. So this flare goes straight in the trash, it's done for, I don't need it, and I have a Con 62H bell with a carbon fiber flare that fits it. So I have this cool, lightweight, screw bell, travel horn. Does it go on those valves? This has been a thought of mine for a long time. I was like, should I mount this on the monster horn? I just need a tuning side receiver and a couple other parts, and it would just be another bell that I have. I think this is in the works for the future. I have not, like, moved forward on this at all. I have not, like, bought a ring or anything. But I think that's the move. And for now, I will keep just kind of practicing my weird 613H hybrid monster Frankenbone. Something interesting about it is that I have several slides, right? I have this Shire slide. I have a Bach 50 slide LT, so that's the nickel slide, no oversleeves. And I have a dual bore Edwards, which is all brass with no oversleeves. And typically, horns are picky about slides. I actually had to make a spreadsheet about my bass drum own slides fitting on my monster bass and how, with each bell, they change the setup. Some of the setups do not work at all. I just can't play them. And on this, only the Shire's dual bore works. I put on the, the Edwards, and it just made the sound kind of thin. It didn't play very well. Um, the LT, the box slide, plays great. It sounds great. And then around low C, low B, it just gets weirdly stuffy, like to the point where it's not fun to play. And this doesn't do any of that. So, again, horns are picky. They are a system. 
This is a very strange system that shouldn't exist, but it is still a system, and when everything is right, it plays and sounds great. Um, it's actually much better with one of my uncut bells. I probably won't put this screw bell on here, at least this one, because um, I just eh, don't love it. Uh, the other ones are better. So that's a cool piece of uh, weird bass trombone land. Um, other than that, I have some projects in the work. I have some horns um, on the way that will be very interesting, and some playing advice that I would love to give once I figure out what it means to me. That's all i got time for today. Bye-bye.